Welcome to Planetary Imaging using Fire Capture. This is Fire Capture, which is probably the most popular capture software among planetary imagers. This video is just for beginners. I'll only be showing you the basic features. Fire Capture is massively configurable. If there's something you don't like about it, then there's still a good chance you can change it to be the way you want it to be. The settings section has eight buttons. Let's press this sprocket button. This brings up the main settings window. Notice that there are 25 pages of settings to choose from. You'll want to spend some time going through all of these so you'll know all the capabilities of Fire Capture and customize it the way you want it to be. Each of these eight buttons in the settings section will open this main settings window but on a different settings page. For example, this button with the filters icon will open the main settings window showing the filters page. You can customize the eight buttons to take you to any of the 25 settings pages. For example, suppose I want to change the filters button to be the histogram button. I click on the tiny arrow displayed on the right side of the button and then select the histogram icon. Now the button opens the settings window on the histogram settings page. Fire Capture has many features that you can learn about simply by pressing one of the many question mark icons which are located all over the screen. Pressing a question mark brings up the help file. For example, pressing the question mark icon on the settings section brings up the help file that explains what the setting options are. There are many settings options for you to explore and they are all documented here. The output of Fire Capture is typically a very large ABI file. You will want to know where the file is on your hard drive, so later when you run your stacking software, you'll know where to find it. Bring up the settings window and visit the capture settings page. Here you can control where the files go and how the file names are formed. Most importantly, make sure you know the folder name so you can find your files later. In the upper right corner, we can select different planets. What is that all about? Well, certain settings will change from planet to planet and depending on which filter you're using. If you're using a one-shot color camera, just leave the filter on L. This turns out to be an extraordinarily nice feature. For example, it remembers the exposure setting that you last used for a given planet and filter. Changing the selected planet also changes the file names. When you hit the Start Capture button, it will begin recording until you hit Stop or Pause, or if a limit is reached. I typically select a time limit. The more time, the better, up to a point. If you go too long, the planet's rotation will smear the image. If you're using an alt as mount, then field rotation will become a problem if you record too long. The next thing I want to show you are the settings to control the size of the picture. Over here on the right we have controls to change the zoom factor. There is a slider and three presets which you can modify. Changing the zoom factor does not change what the camera is capturing or what will end up in the capture file. If we make the zoom factor too great we end up with scroll bars. I suggest you always eliminate the scroll bars by choosing the smaller zoom factor. The other size adjustment is just above the top left of the picture. This setting does affect what is being captured. The radio buttons allow you to select between max or all the pixels and use ROI, a region of interest. When you have use ROI selected, you can then change which region of interest you want.
For capturing thousands of frames, you want to use the smallest region of interest that will comfortably fit the planet. If your mount is a bit wobbly, then the planet will drift around a lot, and you need a slightly larger region of interest. For finding the planet, we want to use all the pixels, so we press max. So we use a region of interest for capturing, and max for finding the planet. In both cases, we select the zoom factor that will give us the largest view without any scroll bars. With my one-shot color camera, I have the D-Bayer option. This makes the picture have color. It also makes the output file be three times larger without any extra information. Make sure that D-Bayer is not selected before hitting the Start Capture button. You should not see any color during capture. The picture also looks a little grainy without D-Bayer. This is normal for a one-shot color camera. I have a separate video on using the histogram. This checkbox turns it on and off. The histogram can be displayed in a separate window or overlaid on the video. You use the histogram to help you find the optimal gain and exposure. The third slider below the gain and exposure sliders can be selected to be gamma. Typically, you want gamma to be set to 50, which is the same as turning it off. You may use a smaller gamma to help you focus, but you don't want to use gamma during capture. Now I will take you through the steps to capture your image. Make sure you have the correct planet selected and your capture time limit. Select max here to get all the pixels. Choose a zoom factor here that will give you the largest view without any scroll bars. See my video on finding the planet. Basically, you want to set the gain exposure so the picture will be overexposed. If the telescope is not perfectly focused, the planet will be dim, which can make it hard to find. Once you find the planet, then focus and change the gain exposure so it is not overexposed. Watch my video on exposure, gain, etc., and another video on histograms for more tips. Move the telescope to center the planet as best you can and select Use ROI. And again, set the zoom factor to give you the largest image without any scroll bars. Before hitting Start Capture, scan the screen to make sure you have everything set right. While capturing, you need to move the telescope as needed to keep the planet inside the picture. Now that you have added a gigabyte file to your hard drive, I suggest you do it a few more times with slightly different settings of exposure and or gain. Fire Capture keeps a log file for each AVI that it makes, and all the settings are saved there so you can later go back and see what works best. Keep experimenting. YouTube videos will only get you so far. This is the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more, then click on one of the four quadrants of this screen to watch another video. I have one on finding the planet, histogram, exposure, gain, etc. And finally, you can click on the bottom right to go to my planetary imaging playlist, which has all of my planetary imaging videos so far.